till we get calm home. Come home. I got brothers I can fall on. Fall Any on. situation, brothers I can call on. Call on. All we gotta do is log on. Log Send on. a chain message, seeing if the God's home. God's home. A brother need help now. Help no matter now. what it is, we deny self now. Self now. Nobody getting let down. let down. For the most high, we gotta put our best down. Best down. Uh. Man, I love this brotherhood. brotherhood. On the road again, hitting up another hood. Another hood. Up north, down south, Midwest, Midwest. it don't matter. We gon' bring it out. Bring it out. Bring it out. Scriptures keep ringing out. Bring it out. We gon' speak it. We gon' rap it. Even sing it out. Sing it out. Camp shirts blinging out. Blingin out. We gon' shine Blingin with these laws. What you be about? You be about. All right, all right. Shalom. Most high in Christ. Bless everybody. Um, welcome to today's class. I'm Brother Raphael to my left. Brother Jacob. Today's topic, the serpent casts out of his mouth the flood. You know, brothers and sisters, we had to touch on this subject because there's a lot of different things out there that is designed to fool our people because Understand something, y'all. You so-called blacks and you so-called Hispanics, whose fathers are of Negroid and Indian descent, we are the biblical Israelites. And I'm going to tell y'all something. What's starting to happen now is the nations is trying to, under the guise of the serpent, as you do see them sitting right there, okay, they're basically using, trying to still, well, our identity already been stolen. But what they're doing systematically, they're trying to infiltrate as being Israel, but under the guise of Christianity. It's still the same thing, but they're calling it something else. And what we're going to do today, brothers and sisters, we're going to look at a video, and we're going to show you what's being pushed out here. Because understand something, y'all. Things are starting to happen. You know, as we do know, Satan is trying his best to try to confuse our people, trying to get our people to think that they are Gentiles still, unfortunately, our people falling for that madness. And what, we suppose, what we're going to do today, Lord's will, is go, Lord's will, is go over some scholarship. We're going to show y'all how our people are wrapped up in the flood. Because what the flood is, brothers and sisters, for some of y'all who don't know, flood is falsehoods, is philosophies, okay, different things our people get caught up in because it's being pushed systematically to get us to think that, like I said before, this man is our friend. But, met, but, but better yet, we're still being uh, destroyed, okay? As it, as it says in the scriptures, we will be destroyed, which we are destroyed as a people. Um, how do you destroy a people? By destroying their identity. And that's what's been going on systematically, especially since we've been here in America. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. But as customary... You can't have laws and no Christ, and you can't have Christ and no laws. They have to be coupled together, okay, because understand something, brothers and sisters. You can't have the law without the testimony. Understand that, okay? So as customary, let's go to the book of Isaiah, chapter 8, verse 20, and then I want Revelation, chapter 19, verse 10. Go ahead, brother. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 8, and verse 20. To the law uh -huh. and to the testimony. Now, the Bible says to the law. Right. If some of y'all who don't know the laws start from Genesis all the way to Revelation, it says to the law. Right. OK. Go, and you said in the testimony. Right. To the law. Now, let's find out what the precept is, the testimony, because we said the law. Now, the precept is the understanding. That's why how we supposed to read the Bible. So uh, let's go to the book of Isaiah. I mean, excuse me, book of Revelation, chapter 19, verse 10. Go ahead. The book, Revelation, chapter 19, verse 10. Go ahead. And I fell at his feet to worship him. All right. And he said unto me, mm -hmm. see thou do it not. Because at that time, if John the Revelator had bowed down to the angel, it been he would have been in the midst of idolatry. So that's why he says, see thou do it not. Go ahead, brother. I am thy fellow servant. And that's who we are. We are the servants of the Most High in Christ. Go ahead, brother. And of thy brethren. And of thy brethren. Go ahead. That have the testimony of Jesus. The testimony of the Messiah, the King of Kings, Christ, Jesus, Yahweh Shai. 
He is the son of the most high. Go ahead, brother. Worship God. Worship the most high because there's no other power above him. That's why we call him the most high. Go ahead, brother. For the testimony of Jesus uh -huh. is the spirit of prophecy. Because guess what, brothers and sisters? If you don't have the spirit of Christ on you, you will not understand this Bible in its entirety. You will not understand prophecies. Okay, you will be sitting there reading the Bible like a novel, not with no understanding. Okay, go ahead. So go back to Isaiah 8 and 20, brother. The book of Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 20. Go ahead. To the law mm -hmm. and to the testimony. Go ahead. If they speak not according to this word, mm. it is because there is no light in them. If they don't speak as it is written, precept upon precept, understand something. There is no light in them. So what is the light according to the Bible, the precept? Let's go to the book of Proverbs, chapter 6, and verse 23. Go ahead, brother. The book of Proverbs, chapter 6, and verse 23. Go ahead. For the commandment is a lamp. The commandment is a lamp. Okay, go ahead. And the law is light. The law is light because understand something, brothers and sisters. When you have the commandments coupled with Christ, you become that shining light. Let your light so shine. So what will happen, the, law, the laws in Christ help you navigate through sin. Okay, so in the sin's transgression of the law, if you're in the midst of sin, what, is, what the law is supposed to do in Christ is supposed to correct you. Okay, go ahead. And reproofs of instruction are the way of life. And reproof of instructions are the way of life. What that means, brothers and sisters, if you are in the midst of sin, which is transgression of the law, the example would be from a person that loves to lie or steal, whatever the case may be. That's an example. You have to filter the laws through Christ. Understand Christ wasn't in the midst of those things. So us as being followers of Christ, we have to navigate through the commandments and say, okay, Christ wasn't in the midst of this, so we're going to follow sin. We're going to follow righteousness under Christ. That's how we're supposed to carry it. Okay, was that it? Okay, now, the serpent, the serpent, the serpent. You know, one thing about the serpent brothers and sisters he's very crafty very crafty and what happens y'all what a lot of our people don't pay attention to is they think satan is something that something you know just a a, a a little red guy in the ground with a pitchfork with horns Stuff that they tell you in Christianity. They tell you in these movies. They do all this nonsense. They always, oh, you know, that's what Satan and all the type of stuff. Not understanding that Satan is the great deceiver. See, what people don't understand, devil only means deceiver. Straight up. Let's just call it for what it is. And how are people being deceived today? They use the philosophies of men. Let's go to start off. Let's go to Colossians chapter 2, verse um, 6, brother. Because... See, people think we just make stuff up, right? And what has happened to our people, they have gotten so caught up in these man in these philosophies of men, they, they don't look at historical facts, right? Oh boy, boy, boy. Colossians chapter two, verse eight, brother. The book of Colossians, chapter 2, and verse 8. Go ahead. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy. Now, the scripture says, beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy. All right? Now, think about this for a second. Just pay attention to this. Beware, and beware, lest any man spoil you, you means to destroy you. Because... How have they destroyed us today? Through politics, through religion. Because what happened, what they do to our people, they subdue us with these devices. We're going to show y'all some stuff with our people, especially some of these brothers out here who supposedly got pardoned by yours truly. And we're going to listen to one of his recipients. Listen to what he had to say. And we're going to read an article that one of the famous, our famous people had to say about this. And you got to understand, you, gotta, you have to ask yourself a serious question. Why are they doing this? 
Because what it does to our people, it desensitizes you to what is really going on with your people. Because here's the thing. If I can pardon a bunch of Jakes, right, I can pardon a bunch of black folks. Or I ain't going to say a fuck. That's a few of them. Some token ones, right? I'm going to pardon these people to let them know everything's all right. They can trust the system. Meanwhile, 5,000 people still getting killed and being tra- treated unjustly. But you just got a few of them. You thinking everybody, everybody good now. Okay? But keep reading, brother. Keep reading it. It says, says what? Beware. Beware lest any man spoil you Go ahead. through philosophy Go ahead. and vain deceit. Vain deceit because we're going to show y'all some vain deceit. We're going to show y'all a video that's being pushed out here in the earth. And we got to be careful with this stuff because it can catch you. It can catch you. You understand? You don't pay attention to what they're doing. Go ahead, brother. After the tradition of men. Tradition of who? Men. We're going to show you some tradition of men in this video. <laughs> because some of the stuff that this person is saying is not scripturally sound. We're going to go to the scriptures. We're going to show y'all something. We're showing y'all what's being perpetuated and what's being pushed to our people. Okay, go ahead, brother. After the rudiments of the world. The rudiments of the world. Go ahead. And not after Christ. And not after Christ. Because we're going to find out. We're going to do the law and the testimony. We're going to find out if this is scripturally sound. We're going to show you all some historical facts on what's being pushed out here. So what we're going to do now, was that it? Yeah, that was it. Let's go to this video. We got to go straight to it. Show you all something. Share what's being pushed. And we're going to stop the video and we're going to show you some corrections. Be- Ma- Make sure y'all listen carefully. Exactly. Listen, listen carefully. carefully to what these people are saying. Because I'm going to tell y'all something. If you are not learned and you don't have an ear to understand what these people are saying, we're showing y'all how vain deceit works. Go ahead, bro. Let, let it play. You've got to first shave your head. You dress all in black. You've got to wear a white robe. Stop right there. Stop right there. Did you hear what he said? You got to shave your head. Let's go to the scriptures. You know what I want, Jakes. And I want and I also want Jeremiah 14 and 2. Because he said, he said, then now pay attention now. We're gonna show y'all and see if it is scripturally sound what this man is trying to say. Either one, you can do go, 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 hit both of them. Okay. <laughs> precept must be upon precept. Hit both of them. The book of Leviticus, chapter. 19 and verse 27. Mm-hmm. Ye shall not round the corners of your heads. Do you hear what the Bible said? The Bible said you should not round the corners of your head. What that means, brothers and sisters, it means you can't shave your head. You're not supposed to do that. Go ahead. Neither shall thou mar the corners of thy beard. And what that means when it said mar the corners of thy beard, it means to destroy your whole beard. That means to be clean shaven. That's what that means. Let's go to the next precept. All right. This is the book of Leviticus, chapter 21 and verse 5. Mm-hmm. They shall not make baldness upon their head. So wait a minute. So this guy, being a demon, just said you have to shave your head. Now, when we go to Colossians, it says here, the tradition of men. <laughs> right. So he just basically, he fell, he falls in this category right here. So beware does any man spoil you, which means to destroy you. Because see, if you're not learned, you don't under, see, because we're able to go to the scriptures and show he's out of order. That's wrong, right? So what did it say again, brother? The book of Leviticus chapter 21 and verse 5. Go ahead. They shall not make baldness upon their head. Okay. Neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard, nor make any cuttings in the flesh. Now, here's the thing. Now, you notice he got a beard, right? Notice that. Okay, he going to keep that. Because the one thing I would know about those so-called Jews, they try their best to try to take our laws. Okay? But we're going to show you all how he's doing it. So, we, so he said we're black, right? Mm-hmm. This is what he, now when he said we're black, y'all, this is what he's trying to do. See, they're very deceitful and very crafty. Go to Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 2. See, they're trying to live out this prophecy right here. The book, 
This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter uh, 14, uh-huh. and verse 2. Go ahead. Judah mourneth, and the gates thereof languish. Now, Judah mourneth, because understand something, y'all. Judah is in mourning right now. Our people in captivity. Those people aren't in captivity. Judah mourning right now, and the gates, our leaders, languish. Because right now, our leaders right now, think about it for a second. We don't have a pure leader right now except Christ. That's it. So Judah mourneth, okay? But go ahead. Keep reading. And the gates thereof languish. Go ahead. They are black unto the ground. That's why he's saying that. Because he, because he read, because see, they understand. That's why they wear black. That's why the so-called Jews, and he's trying to tell you to do that. Go ahead. And we're going to see it. Right. They're going to do it. They're going to do it. <laughs> they said black unto the ground, right? Right. Hold that. Go to Genesis. See, we're showing y'all. Because see, is he black into the ground? You look at, look at, look at, look at. He's a fair-skinned man. Okay? He's a so-called white man. He ain't black into the ground. Why he ain't wearing black? He telling you to wear black, though. Go ahead. The book of Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7. Go ahead, brother. And the Lord formed man of the dust of the ground. Go ahead. And breathed into his nostrils. The breath of life. Now, when you look at the ground, the dark, the, the deeper you do dig into the ground, it's darker. It's darker. Um, I would say darker dirt. I say that way. Browner, not not brown. You could say brown, dark brown, whatever the case may be. Now, when it says black into the ground, it's showing you how we would look, right. how the Jews, the, the the Jews would look. That's the look that you see, the people you see today, we are the, the real Israelites, okay? And we're going to go to the term Israeli. I want, to, I want you to put the definition of Israeli because you're going to hear that a lot in this video, okay? I want you to pull up the term Israeli after that, okay? Before you, matter of fact, stop that video. Pull up the definition of Israeli for me. We got, we got to do this, y'all. Because we're showing y'all how despiteful, how, how very crafty these people are. Okay? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yep. It won't. It won't let you do it. You can't Google it. The definition of Israeli. It gets, yep. Let me show y'all something. See, um, what? What does it say? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. We want to pull that. We have to be simple with this, y'all. What does it say? Yeah, that's good now. That's good now. What'd it say? <laughs> <laughs> it says Israeli may refer to see may refer to uh-huh. something of, from, or related to the state of Israel. Mm-hmm. All right, the second one. Israelis, citizens of or permanent residents of the state of Israel. Mm-hmm. There you go. Right. Right. Yeah. That's where we're going with this. We show y'all something. Israeli, you don't see that in the Bible, do you? Right. You don't see. You see, is once again, we go back to Colossians. It says, <laughs> tradition of men, vain deceit. When you go to the Holy Bible, you don't find the term Israeli. That's something that's made. That's something made up. That's some, that's something that for the state of Israel. That's something they made up. Okay, I had to pull that, brothers and sisters, because when you go, when you, when someone, when you deal with people like that, show them the difference between an Israelite mm-hmm. and an Israeli. An Israelite is a descendant of Israel. Okay, go ahead to the video now. We just want to show those points. Let him let him speak. 
Try to bear with this, y'all. Now you say eat what? Now, 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 he said you got, uh-huh, uh uh-huh. Stop right there. What's the definition of kosher? Can you give me that, please? See, everything we're showing y'all, you don't find this in the Bible. You just don't. He just told you what you got to do, right? He said you got to eat kosher foods, then become a vegetarian. Which is it? Okay, because last I checked, the scripture says the Lord gave us foods to eat and foods don't eat. How can you be a ve- well? You can't be a vegetarian on Passover, <laughs> right? You got to eat yeah. or any of them feasts, right? Days. Right. What does term kosher mean? What does it mean? Of food or premises in which food is sold, cooked, or eaten. Satisfying the requirements of Jewish law. The requirements of Jewish law. The verb says prepare food according to the requirements of Jewish law. Hmm. Is that right? It's madness. Why not just say food according to the law? Right. Right, it's, it's according to God's laws. And where, where did he get this Jewish from? So Jewish, let's find out. So what does Jewish mean? Right. Let's find out. What, what does Jewish mean? Let's find out. See, we, we, see, we got to do this, y'all. We got to do this because a lot of stuff is being perpetuated out here. Here we go. Okay. Jewish, relating to associated with or den- denoting Jewish people or Judaism. This is epic fail, man. <laughs> <laughs> what None of this stuff go together. Right. So so it says, say, read, it, read it one more time, brother. We, we got to do this, y'all. We got to do it. Jewish, go up a little bit. Yeah. Jewish, relating to, associated with, or denoting Jewish people or Judaism. Man, none of that got nothing to do with Israel. Now, it says associated with. Right. It ain't saying you are the Jew. What it's really telling y'all, if y'all just use common sense, all it's saying, you, all it's saying is basically, all it's basically telling you is Jewish only means pertaining to. Right. 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 So now, go back, go back to the video. See, I, I, we're doing this for a reason. We're showing y'all the difference what these people are doing to our heritage, y'all. I'm showing y'all something. Showing y'all how they're working this. Go ahead, let, 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 let it play. I just had to do it's, it. It's funny. It's funny because the Most High is very direct in the things when he orders things. Right. And everything that he's saying is just, is. It doesn't make it doesn't line up. Doesn't make it's sense. It's all speculation. It's very, yeah, and it's vague. Right. It's vague. Right. He can't show you. If you notice, where's his scripture at to support what he's saying? Because it because what we could do is show you the scripture says we're supposed to wear fringes. We go right to it. We'll show you. We just showed you our scriptures where you don't supposed to ball your head. We just showed you our scripture on why they wear black because the true Israelites, the true Jews, you want to call them, are black unto the ground. So we show in the Bible. Where's this scripture at? We showing y'all something. That's it's vain to see. Go ahead, let, let, let it play, bro. Let it play. Let it play. Stop right there. <laughs> now he just said he just contradicted himself. I run it well, run it back one more time. Run it back one more time. First Kings. Stop right there. Now, why would he tell you to face Jerusalem, then face any when you pray? Verse 23, right? Brother. Mm-hmm. You want to go, go to um, 1 Kings chapter 8, mm-hmm. and I want verse 15. 
Okay. Because remember what it says in First Kings chapter eight, verse fifty. He just says something, right? We're going we, we to the scriptures. The book of First Kings chapter eight and verse fifty. Go ahead. And forgive thy people that have sinned against thee. Matter of fact, no. Go to um. Go to verse forty-eight. That's what I want. I'm okay. sorry. I'm verse sorry. forty-eight. Okay. And so return unto thee with all their heart. Go ahead. And with all their soul. Go ahead. In the land of their enemies. Now, we're in the land of our enemies right now. Are they in the land of their enemies? No. Okay. This is, we're going with what the Bible said. Go ahead. Which led them away captive. Mm -hmm. Did they ever get led away captive? Right. And pray unto thee toward their land. Toward what? Toward their land. Go ahead. Which thou gavest unto their fathers, the city which thou hast chosen. And the house which I have built for my name. Stop. Go to Second Chronicles chapter six, verse six, to find out what he's talking about. Because he's made a statement that was contradictory in one sentence. On one end, you saying Jerusalem, you said India. <laughs> which is it? <laughs> the book of Second Chronicles chapter six and verse six. Go ahead. But I have chosen Jerusalem. Chosen what? Jerusalem. Go ahead. That my name might be there, and have chosen David. To be over my people, Israel. Not Israeli. Go back to 1 Kings 8 and 48 again. Now we understand, we, we established, that's why precept must be upon precept. We just established the land which I've chosen. Okay? Go back to 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 48, and we're gonna let, him, let, let, let this guy say what he has to say. We just we can't we showing you how he's contradicting the scriptures. He's imposing on the text, <laughs> is when our so-called Christian brothers would say. Uh huh. You want me to read it? Yeah, go ahead, read it, brother. The Book of First Kings, chapter eight and verse forty-eight. Go ahead. And so return unto thee with all their heart. This is repentance, y'all. If y'all don't know, when we read this scripture, it's showing you how we're supposed to bethink ourselves, remember who we are, repent, turn away from sin. And so, so this is this right here is supplication. This is what we're doing. We are repenting, coming back to the Most High in Christ. Go ahead, brother. Go With ahead. With all their soul. Go ahead. In the land of their enemies. Aren't we we are in the land of our enemies. We're scattered within the four corners of the earth. We and we are we will we be in we in we we, we are in captivity. So whether it's the bulk of the Israelites in the Western Hemisphere. Or on the eastern hemisphere where we still scatter on the four corners of the earth. Go ahead, brother. Which led them away captive. Go ahead. And pray unto thee toward their land. Mm. Toward where? Toward their land. Go ahead. Which thou gavest unto their fathers. Mm -hmm. The city which thou hast chosen. Go ahead. And the house which I have built for thy name. So the Lord is making it clear. That's why we, that's why we rise and face Jerusalem when we pray. Where is this guy talking about? See, vain deceit, traditions of men. Go ahead. Let, 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 let the video play. What do you say? Oh, no. You look up and laughing. Yeah. <laughs> you pray in Hebrew. And if you do all of those outward when you pray, you pray only in Hebrew, then you grow a nice big beard. And if you do all of those outward cultural things, you'll discover the God of the universe. And I'm thinking this is crazy that someone thinks that they can force their culture on God and that God's going to be impressed by what you wear, what direction you face when you pray, what you eat, all these sorts of things. It seemed to me that if there was a God out there who could be known, he should be able to be recognized no matter where I face, no matter how I'm dressed, because he's God. Over pause the it right there. Pause, 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 pause. Th so this is the reason why Christ said what he said in Matthew 7 and 6. Because all they doing is just trampling on what is meant for us in it. Pull it. Pull it, brother. Pull it. Show these people why Christ said what he said, y'all. Because of people like that. That right there is crafty as hell. He just told you, God, he's interpreting what God, how are you going to interpret? That's a private interpretation.
this. He's prayer. He's interpret. He's interpreting the Most High. We just read to you what the Lord Himself told you to pray towards the land. It's showing y'all. Showing y'all this deceitful. Go ahead. The book of St. Matthew, chapter 7 and verse 6. Go ahead. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs. You hear what the scriptures say? We did a class on that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs. Go ahead. Neither cast ye your pearls before swine, mm. lest they trample them under their feet mm. and turn again and rend you. That's what they've done. They're rending, they're rending us to pieces with their philosophies. And remember, too, these, the dogs, meaning the other nations, <laughs> he pulled it up quick. <laughs> <laughs> All praises. But remember, it said, lest they trample them under their feet. Remember that. All right, let, you want to let the video play? Or you um, pull, um, pull one more thing. Give me the book of Matthew 24. And give me 24, 23. See, we're showing y'all what these people are doing. They, they, 24, Matthew 24, 23. When did you read it, read it uh, 24? The book of St. Matthew, chapter 24, and verse 23. Mm. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, mm -hmm. or there, believe it not. Like what they're saying, you're sure. They're trying, they trying to do the Hebrew to try to catch you. Or the Yiddish, because that's what they're speaking is Yiddish. It ain't, no, it ain't the real Hebrew anyway. Go right. ahead, brother. For there shall arise false Christ. You see it today, false anointed ones. Oh, I'm an Israeli. Oh, I am, the, I am a part of the anointed. It says, Christ is telling you, for there shall arise false Christ. That's plural, which means anointed. It can be Christianity. In this case, it's the spirit of Christianity. They called it Israel, but it's really the spirit of Christianity because what they're trying to tell you is you just a Jew that believes on Christ. They yeah. try to be very crafty, y'all. Be careful with this. We're showing y'all. It's the same thing. It's we know we're the Jews and we believe on Christ. Right. We're the real Jews. Right. But this is what Christ had to say. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. This should arise false Christ. For, of lo, here is Christ, or there, mm -hmm. believe it not. Go ahead. For there shall arise false Christ mm -hmm. and false prophets, mm -hmm. like pastors, uh -huh. and also these Jewish rabbis. rabbis. Them too. Yep. And shall show great signs and wonders mm -hmm. in so much. That if it were possible, mm -hmm. they shall deceive the very elect. If it were possible, you should deceive the very elect. The elect won't get fooled by this. The elect of the Lord will not get fooled because our people can see through this madness. But go ahead, let, but let, but let, 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 let the video play. Try to show y'all that. Go ahead. Stop, stop, stop. <laughs> See, this is why you had him pull his stuff up ahead of time. Because straight off the bat, Israelis, back it up a little bit. Israelis, they not the people. Right. And there they go, Yep. dressed in black, trying to, yeah, all of it. You can see them. They all through, you see them scattered in there, dressed in black. Yep. Trying to be like you said, like Jeremiah uh, fourteen and two. Right. This stuff is a joke, man. Sean, sure, y'all, go ahead, let it go. Israelis have been at the center of the struggle, hungry for meaning, asking questions and searching for answers. Many find joy in the comfort of the world, while others drown in the sorrow. Some have found the answer in one name, Jesus, or as we call him in Hebrew, Yeshua. Once for Israel is an initiative of native-born Israelis who are on the forefront of high-tech evangelism, bringing salvation to Israel, raising up leaders and equipping them with the tools they need to transform their communities. Native-born Israelis. And with an emphasis on winning souls, building disciples, and sending leaders, we promote the kingdom of God to both Jews and Arabs throughout the land of Israel. Our Bible college has now grown into a certified...
private educational institution <laughs> offering bachelor's and master's degree programs they trying to do what Jews we're doing Arabs together in the classroom and experiencing peace and unity in the name of Yeshua from our campus located in central Israel we work together to proclaim the gospel of the Messiah through websites a radio station a television studio That's classroom right, instruction and the largest Christian library right in Israel. training equipping and providing a platform for the gospel to go forth. Oh, pause also it real quick. Pause it. I, I got to bring this out real quick, man, because this is what they're trying to do. I'm going to Hosea 1, mm -hmm. and verse, um, mm -hmm. verse uh, 11. And then, we go, and then we come back to Matthew, and we're going to go to 24, 14. He's about the gospel, right? Uh -huh. Okay. All right. We just show y'all. <laughs> we just showing y'all what the scriptures say. They're saying something else. The Bible says something totally different. But go ahead, Jay, give it to him, brother. I'm trying to show y'all something. We're showing y'all what's being pushed out here, y'all. Because see, what, what they're doing, they're trying to fight against the truth. Mm -hmm. One in 11. They, they, they trying to fight against the <laughs> truth. And what they're trying to do, they're trying to be very crafty mm -hmm. now. Use the term ev evangelical and stuff like that, right? <laughs> right. They're trying to be very quick. Go ahead. But see, they don't, they just, they're calling themselves Israelis right. and Jewish. But this is more to the point. But it's still what they're trying to do. Right. Uh, Hosea chapter 1 and verse 11. Then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel be gathered together. That's what they're trying to do and bring these Israelis under Christ. Then um, shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel be gathered together and appoint themselves one head. And they shall come up out of the land, for great shall be the day of Jezreel. So what they're doing is trying to show or trying to get Israelis mm -hmm. to repent right. and follow Christ, trying to fulfill prophecy. Give me the book of Isaiah 44, verse 1. <laughs> See, because I get tired of this native born nonsense. It's like stuff like that showing y'all. We got to go right to the scriptures to, to right. show y'all you can't be a native born Israeli. Right. This is a good one. Let's go right to the scriptures. Let's find what the Bible say. Okay. You want verse one, right? Start at verse one. The yes, book sir. of Isaiah, chapter 44 and verse one. Go ahead. Yet now hear, O Jacob. Hear who? O Jacob. Go ahead. My servant. Uh-huh. And Israel, whom I have chosen. Whom, you didn't hear the term Israeli, did you? Right. Israel. You say Israel. Okay. Go ahead. Verse two. Thus saith the Lord that made thee. That's who made thee. Go ahead. And formed thee from the womb. From the what? From the womb. You sure it won't just because we go into the land and we just native born there? Formed thee from the womb. Because remember something, the term Israeli, it just means you're a citizen of the land. That's all it means. It don't mean you're Israelite. Israelite means you are descendant of. Of, of the Israeli of or pertaining to. Or pertaining to, exactly. Right. Go ahead. It says what? Go ahead, brother. Thus said the Lord that made thee uh -huh. and formed thee from the womb, Go ahead. which will help thee. Mm. Fear not, O Jacob, my servant, mm -hmm. and thou, Jeshurun, whom I have chosen. Go ahead. For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty. Not the flood. <laughs> the real water. The, 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 the living water of Christ. That's what we want. Not the flood of these lies. Flood of lies. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, brother. And floods upon the dry ground. Mm. I will pour my spirit. Upon thy seed. Upon thy what? Thy seed. The seed of Israel. We may, they may be on the land, but we're from the man, understand? <laughs> keep that in keep that in your mind, in your mental roller decks. Because they on the land, but we're from the man. The seed. Okay, go ahead, brother. And my blessing upon thine offspring. Go ahead. And they shall spring up as among the grass, uh -huh. as willows by the water course. Because you see different various camps springing up. You see willows all over the four corners of the earth was happening. There's truth. And that's why they have to combat it with lies. Because they know it's, it's going global. So you have to do what? They have to combat it with what? Oh, we're one in Israel. So now you want to gather all the other nations to try to come and take our heritage from us. It's very crafty to go to Bible college and try to do all this nonsense. Right. See, we already know what you're doing. That's why I say we should spring up as willows. Various organizations, different Isra Israelites are rising up and teaching the truth. Spring up as willows. Go ahead, brother. 
by the water courses. Mm -hmm. One shall say, I am the Lord's, mm -hmm. and another shall call himself by the name of Jacob. Go ahead. And another shall subscribe with his hand unto the Lord uh -huh. and surname himself by the name of Israel. The name of Israel. That's why you have us call ourselves Ben Israel or Bot Israel because what we're doing, we're coming back to who we are. That's why we use those terms. Because we're surnaming ourselves because we're coming back to our true heritage. Okay? We are the true Israelites of the Bible. Okay? That's who we are. And no one else going to tell us different. So they can come with this nonsense all they want, but we're going to come to the scriptures. But keep reading, brother. Verse 6. Verse six Thus uh -huh. saith the Lord, the Go ahead. king of Israel. The what? The king of Israel. <laughs> And his redeemer. And his redeemer. Go ahead. The Lord of hosts. Uh-huh. I am the first uh -huh. and I am the last. Go ahead. And besides me, there is no God. There is no other God because I understand something. They made sure to say Yeshua. Y'all be crafty with that too. For some of you brothers wrapped up in the name, be careful with that too. Mm -hmm. No one has the name. They're trying to be crafty. They're trying to use Hebrew, trying to catch you. But it's really all it is is Yiddish. That's all it really is. No one has the pure language, brothers and sisters. Okay? And how do we know that? Go to the book of Micah. Okay, we got to prove that point because, see, some of y'all get wrapped up in this nonsense. Okay, and, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, and then I'm going to, uh, I probably have to hit Proverbs too to show y'all something. Because brothers get wrapped up in this name stuff. Man, you crapped up in the name, brother. Okay. Matter of fact, before you hit that, I'm gonna hit, I'm, before you hit that, go to go to Psalms, chapter 102 and verse 21. Because I get tired of these brothers pushing this night. Oh man, you got the name, but you gotta say it like this. Yahweh. You sure? Okay, brother, if that's what you want to say, okay, I'll praise it. But understand something. We understand he's the son of the most high. He's the Messiah, the anointed one. <laughs> Psalms 102 and verse 21 and 22, brother. The book of Psalms, chapter 102 and verse 21. Go ahead. To declare the name of the Lord in Zion. Go ahead. And his praise in Jerusalem. And where? In Jerusalem. Go ahead. When the people are gathered together. Has that happened yet? No. We're still scattered, brothers and sisters. Why do you think we are here teaching? To the four corners of the earth, to the 12 tribes scattered abroad. To declare the name of the Lord, you don't have that yet because we ain't got it together yet. So how you going to sit there and say you got the name? Read it up the top again when he said verse 22, brother. When the people are gathered together. Go ahead. And the kingdoms to serve the Lord. Has that happened yet? No. Now go to Micah. <laughs> Had to prove that point. We're still gathering together now, brothers and sisters. We're not gathered because we're not on one accord. Okay? So we can't declare the name of the Lord. So we keep saying Yeshua and Yeshua. Okay, that's fine. You say that. But don't make it into a doctrine. Don't tell me I have to say Yahweh Shai. Because where is that in the scriptures? Where is that in the law that says I have to say it to get salvation? Would you want it? I want Micah chapter 3. I think it's verse 8, I think. Was that my, oh, you know what? You know the one I wanted. Zephaniah? Yeah, Zephaniah. My bad. My bad. I'm sorry. I, I got caught up in Micah because I was going to, Zephaniah, there we go. Zephaniah. <laughs> yeah. Three and eight. There we go. Zephaniah 3 and 8. I'm glad you said Yeah, that. Zephaniah 3 and 8. That's what I want. Therefore, wait ye upon me, saith the Lord. Go ahead. Until the day that I rise up. Oh, that's not it either. It's 7. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm, my bad. It's verse 9. Yeah. For then will I turn to the people mm -hmm. a pure language. Go ahead. That they may all call upon the name of the Lord. Because when you have the pure language, brothers and sisters, you want how Yahweh Shai, you want how Yeshua. Zephaniah, yeah, Zephaniah 3 and 9. That's what we wanted. Yeah, that, my bad. 3 and 9, because it's showing y'all something. You don't have the name of the Lord. You just don't. Because this hadn't happened yet. Once you get the pure, the pure language, y'all, and the name is a reward in the, in the kingdom. 
So when we as the true Israelites rise up and we repent and the Lord come and redeem us from our enemies, then you would get, then you would get the pure language and the name. But, but, but it's not wrong. I mean, listen, we have many people that say, yeah, I was shy. I don't get crazy about that. I mean, whatever, brother. That's what you choose to do. That's okay. But don't tell me I'm out of order and tell me I'm, I'm in the midst of sin for not saying it. Because what you're doing, you're making it into a doctrine. You can't do that. And they're saying, yes, sure. They're trying to catch you. But let, but let, but let the video pop. We, had to just, we just had to pull those. Go ahead. Let, 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 let it play. Let it play. Let's find out what more, what more they have to say. With local authorities who provide humanitarian aid to Holocaust survivors, caring for each and every generation with the love of Yeshua. Chapter 53, ex-Rabbi and Imeth Messiah, among others, are all tools and outlets provided by One for Israel so the Jewish people can hear, receive, and grow in their knowledge of the Messiah. We want to promote the message of the gospel in the land of Israel through the cooperation of Christians worldwide. Together, we can care for, educate, and reach out to both Jews and Arabs in the land of Israel. I, I just got to say this. Go ahead, say it. All of this studying I've been doing on our history, and we, you, we can look in the scriptures and see where the other nations are coming, punishing us, killing us, killing our people, doing all kinds of atrocities to us. And from 70 AD until this very day, they've been killing us by the thousands. So in the, we're in, our, in the land of our captivity now. We're killing each other. But... If you start as slavery and you start going back, they've been killing us by the thousands in every land that we've been in, especially the so-called white man, which is these people right here. Mm -hmm. They've been killing us by the thousands everywhere we've lived. We've lived in Britain, throughout all of Europe, and everywhere we've been, that, and especially wherever Christianity is, they have killed us by the thousands. Mm -hmm. so I, they have the audacity to bring up the Holocaust. They just doing that, trying to fulfill prophecy. We've been going through this for 2,000 years, and they got one incident. How long did that last? Ten years. And it, and, and it wasn't six million people. And it wasn't six million Jews in all of Europe. We're going we gonna, to we gonna show some scholarship on this stuff. Mm-mm-mm. Let it play. We just got to have something to try to point to them. And reach out property. to both Jews and Arabs in the land of Israel. Received in Rabbi and Messiah, among others, are all tools and outlets provided by One for Israel so the Jewish people can hear, receive, and grow in their knowledge of the Messiah. We want to promote the message of the gospel in the land of Israel through the cooperation of Christians worldwide. Together, we can care for, educate, and reach out to both Jews and Arabs in the land of Israel. Yeah, we have going with Ezekiel 36. Listen, y'all, sh sh shut, shut them down. Go to Ezekiel chapter 36 and verse 5, y'all. You notice what he said about this? They're saying Christians, they're saying Jewish people and Arabs. If y'all notice something, I'm going to want y'all to pay attention to what, what they're doing. Those are the three dominant religions that's occupying the land. You got so-called Christians over there that's pushing Christianity. You have the so-called Jews called Judaism. How the hell do you make a, make, take a man and make a religion out of them? I don't know. Then you got the Arabs over there. They got that golden dome over there. So they, they want to lay claim. You have the Palestinians. They lay claim to Jerusalem. 
That's why it lays, that's why this scripture we're about to pull shows y'all something, okay? Ezekiel 36 and 5, and then we want, um, after that, then we want Revelation 11 and 2. After that. All right, this is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 36 and verse 5. Go ahead, brother. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, mm -hmm. surely in the fire of my jealousy, mm. Have I spoken against the residue of the heathen? The residue of the heathen is what you see over there today. Those people, he said 70 years, so they say they right. 1948, mm -hmm. that was when they came over there and made it a Jewish state. Okay, that's what they did, right? Keep reading, brother. And against all I do me. Against what? All I do me. All the nation of Israel, I mean nation of I do me, which is Edom, have to pay for this. Because they don't want a court to do what they're doing. That's what they're doing. Go ahead, brother. Which have appointed my land into their possession. That's what they did in 1948, the League of Nations, which is known as the United Nations today. They took the land of Israel and called it a Jewish state. Okay, go ahead. With despiteful. Yeah, with Despiteful minds uh -huh. to cast it out for a prey. And how it's being cast out for a prey, brothers and sisters, is because what they're doing, that line, every nation is say we are an Israeli. We are citizens of Israel. So they lay it for a prey because they're saying anybody can become a Jew. They're trying to push just like being in Christianity. Like anybody can be a Christian. As long as you believe on Christ, they're saying that you are part of the promise. That's what they're, see, they're trying to push that in a very crafty way. Okay? Go ahead, brother. What you got? Yeah, I won't. Yeah, I won't. Revelation. The 11 and 2. Revelation chapter 11 and verse 2. Go ahead. But the cook. I better read one yeah. so they'll understand. The book of Revelation chapter 11 and verse 1. And there was given unto me a reed like unto a rod. Mm -hmm. And the angel stood saying, Rise. And measure the temple of God mm. and the altar and them that worship therein. But the court, which is without the temple, mm -hmm. leave out mm. and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles. Mm. And the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. And that's what they're doing today. Just like Christ said, it should be uh, the time of the Gentiles. And, I mean, we can pull that, too, to, to support what he's saying. I have to go to that and, and to get a full understanding. Because remember something, it says, the, it says, but the court, which is without the temple, leave out. Measure it not, for it's given to the Gentiles. Now it's the time of the Gentiles right now. Because what they have done, they took, they've taken the land, they've taken our identity, so therefore, Christ says something showing you what they were going to do. The Gentiles, they're trampling upon the land. Okay, go ahead. Like, that's what I said in Matthew 7 and 6. Right. Christ says, lest they uh, trample thee underfoot. Right, and, and they rend us because what they have done to our people is fooled us into believing that we Gentiles. Mm -hmm. Let's go right to the book of um, Luke chapter 21 and verse 20, uh, 24. 24. Right. The book of Luke chapter 21 and verse 24. Go ahead, brother. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. That has happened to our people still today. We're still falling by the edge of the sword. It's judgment because we broke the commandments of God. Go ahead, brother. And shall be led away captive uh -huh. into all nations. Did that happen to these people? No, they weren't led captive into all nations. Because if you can't show me, show me documentation where you saw a bunch of Edomites being scattered all over the, all over the planet. That's been put on cargo slave ships and been sold. I'll wait because somehow that's, this is what happened to the real Israelites, not Israelis. Go ahead, brother. <laughs> <laughs> and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles. Uh-huh. Until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. We are in the time of the Gentiles right now. The real Israelites are supposed to not even be on that land. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to be exiled till Christ come back and establish us back on earth in our rightful position. But what they're trying to do, 
they're trying to live out the prophecies when it's not even for them. So it's being trodden down of the Gentiles until the time the Gentiles be fulfilled. We're in the time of the Gentiles right now. And they're living it out. So that's why you go to Revelation 11 and 2. It's really going hand in hand with that precept. Because the Gentiles right now, they're casting our land for a prey to all the other nations. You're talking about people from China saying, oh, I'm coming back to the motherland because that's my land. No, it's not. It's just going to show y'all it's deceitful. Okay? Understand that. You got something? Okay, let's go. Let's go right to the scholarship now. Right. Then let's, we're going, let's, we're going, let's, let's prove who these people are. Right. Because it's sad, y'all, that we have to show y'all this right here is the flood. We're gonna go right to that too. First thing, first one, Bethel, pull up uh, the one with all the green underlining. We gotta show y'all some um a little bit of scholarship. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna show you that they not the people right. that we are. We gotta show y'all, we gotta show it to you, and then we're gonna go with to what the Israelites look like. We're gonna go to the scriptures. We gotta go to we we actually touched this before y'all in a different class. But the reason why we're touching this again, we're showing y'all because we're showing y'all what they're doing on a global level to fight the truth. Can you see that? Can you see it? Go ahead. Shalom. There we go. <sighs> All right. So this says, and it reads, Thus the Jews are a people who have ever, according to the prophecy, dwelt alone without intermixing with the nations to this day. Now this separate race all descended from brown ancestors. For Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob must have been as dark as Mar Yohanan, if not darker, exhibit every shade of color from the black Jews of Malabar, of whom we have such an interesting account by Dr. Claudius Buchanan to the rosy and lily complexion of the Jewesses of the banks of the Elibi. We need go no further than the Jews of southern Spain and compare them with those of the Holland and northern Germany to, pr to perceive a very striking difference. The Spanish Jew is always dark complexioned and his hair is uniformly black whilst the german jew is often as fair as any german and has light or red hair with blue eyes hold on hold on hold on <coughs> pull that picture up mm -hmm. pull uh, the with the serpent pic. yeah the class pic the class pic <laughs> yeah pull that up well what 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 color hair he said they have The German Jew is often as fair as any German uh -huh. and has light or red hair with <laughs> blue eyes. Esau. That's Esau description. All right, go back to the, um, you didn't finish reading that. The various shades of color observable among the Negro or African race tends to, tends to the same conclusion along the coast of Guinea, which is low, marshy, and hot, we find jet black com cl complexions. And this is the very country from which American Negroes have been derived. In other words, the original Jew, the ancient Jews, are black. How do we know that? Go to Zephaniah, chapter two, verse 12. We got to show y'all this because we showing y'all stuff 
that is going to contradict what they're trying to push out. We had to, we had to touch, we touched this before, but we had to show y'all what's going on tonight, what's going on right now. This is being pushed right now in the earth. Okay. Zephaniah 2 and 12. The book of Zephaniah chapter 2 and verse 12. Ye Ethiopians also. Oh, no, that ain't, no, that's not the one. I want the one. That's, like the Ethiopians. Yeah, yeah, that's the one I wanted. I'm trying to look at that one. Right, 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 right. That's the one I wanted. Are you not? Yeah. Yeah, because I think I was one I had pulled a while back. Because I remember one time. But even in that, before you. Amos 9, Amos 97. Right, right. Yeah, that's the one I wanted. And then I want Acts 13. Huh. Hmm. All right, Amos, the book of Amos chapter 9 and verse 7. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, the book of Amos, chapter 9, and verse 7. Are ye not as children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel, saith the Lord? Have not I brought up Israel out of the land of Egypt and the Philistines from Kaphtor and the Syrians from Kerr? Now, what that means, y'all, is the ancient Ethiopians are dark-skinned people. So that's why the Lord said that, because we are a dark-skinned people. So right now, because our people have been intermixing with the other nations, we pulled it before, we, we is a confusion of faces now. So right now, the 12 tribes of Israel, we have different shades, but it's showing y'all originally, we were all dark-skinned people. Matter of fact, go to the book of Acts 13 and verse 1. <laughs> the book of Acts chapter 13 and verse 1 Go ahead Now there were in the church that was at Antioch Certain prophets and teachers As Barnabas and Simeon That was called nigger Ain't that something? Isn't that what they call us today? Mm -hmm. Now you pull it up You see This is how we look yeah, Let's pull up the definition Let's put the definition. We gotta show y'all. We you got it. We have to be simple and show y'all this because these are things that need that people need to know. You know, and this is something that's recent. That's why we're revisiting this because this is something that's being pushed into earth right now. Um, this is out of, what's the name of this book again? This is the Webster's New International Dictionary, second edition. This is a hundred-year-old dictionary to the date. Negro, niger, <laughs> or nigger. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you see that? Meaning black. Right. <laughs> so... To showing you how how our people looked, okay. You see that? You got it. Yeah. Let me say this because we can see it. But you have the apologetics. They try to say that when it says it here in Acts thirteen that this is uh, Simeon's surname. But it doesn't tell you that that's his surname. Right. Everywhere else in the scripture, it'll tell you when yeah. someone has a right. surname. Right. 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 And you see it spelled N I G E R too. So it's still it's still telling you the same thing. Right. Because so you, right. It's a Latin word here uh -huh. that means black. Okay. Well, and that it became it, woolly yeah. hair. It gives you the, the <laughs> descriptions. Woolly hair. Isn't that what Christ looked like? Well, yeah. Read that. It's giving a description. Yeah. Give the description. We showing y'all this is the, how, how old this book is. This is a hundred years old. Oh, okay. They couldn't tamper with it, huh? We have this book here at the school. It's an extremely large book. 
<laughs> um, yeah, so it says a person. Thing. No, read read the whole thing. Yeah. Negro. Negroid. Negrito up there at the top. No, where it says Negro on down. All right, Negro. Negroes. Yeah. Niger. Aiken. <laughs> a person belonging to the black race, especially to the typical African branch of ra- of that race. Well, hold, hold on, brother. See in parentheses, it says nigger. Yep. Nigger. Which one? Yeah, yeah right there. Right here? Right under Aiken. Oh, here. Yep. Oh, nigger. Gotcha. Yes, sir. Same thing they call us today. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, read on. Um... A person belonging to the black race, especially to the typical African branch of that race, formerly called the Ethiopian. Hold on, hold on. So now Ethiopian is a term. Mm-hmm. It comes from a Greek word, atheops, which means burnt, burnt face. face. Was that right? The type being categorized by tall stature and often powerful physique, mm. extreme yeah, I can see that word. <laughs> Convex forehead. Prognathius jaw with large teeth. Mm-hmm. Flat, broad nose. everted lips. Woolly hair. And dark brown to sooty black complexion. Mm. Specifically, a person of the typical race in- inhabiting the Sudan or that part of Africa between the Congo and the Sahara also inhabited by Hamites, Arabs, and Pygmies. Oh, that's, that's good. But notice it said also inhabited by Hamites. Mm-hmm. There's yeah. a difference. There's a difference. It even they know back then. So why is it Hamites and Negroes? The same way it's in Zonovan. And Arabs. And Arabs. Because the Arabs, the original Arabs is black. Yep. Now, they didn't, it's in books. They were black until... They started their conquest and started mixing with Edomites. Right. And that's why some brothers get caught up and think the Arabs are Esau because you got light-skinned Arabs that look like they could be Esau, but they really are Esau because you are the seed of your father. So because what happened, Arab, they just mingled people. So they mingled in with them, and therefore what Esau has done, he's mixed in it and called himself the Arab. Another thing, too. They wanted, they had harems, mm-hmm. and in them harems, they preferred the palest Edomite women they could find. Yep. They were snatching them. Yep. <laughs> they were paying people to snatch Edomite right. women. Right, right, right. That's going to happen again. <laughs> <laughs> Trust and believe that. They exactly, with the Sabians, that's going to happen again. So prepare yourself. That's going to happen again in history. The Sabians definitely going to take care of them. Okay. Oh, don't worry. It's going to happen. Go to uh, go to the book of Acts 21 and verse 37. We trying to show y'all something. Show y'all lies. This stuff is being perpetuated in the earth. Acts 21 and verse 37 and 38. Because y'all want love to run to Paul, right? Let's find out what Paul looked like. <laughs> the book of Acts chapter 21 and verse 37. Go ahead. And as Paul was to be led into the castle, he said unto the chief captain, May I speak unto thee? Who said, Canst thou speak Greek? Verse 38. Art not thou that Egyptian? Why does he call him an Egyptian? Because Paul had dark skin. Because if he was a light skin, if he was very light, or if he was uh, a white man, why would he mistake him for an Egyptian? Just like his forefather Moses exactly. was mistaken for an Egyptian. Right. Go ahead. Is that it? Art not thou that Egyptian <laughs> which before these days made us an uproar and led us out into the wilderness 4,000 men that were murderers? That were murderers. So it's showing y'all during that time, when you look at what they were doing, it's showing y'all something. Now, let's deal with the flood. We're going to stick with the flood. What? What? Let's go back to it. What? what? Go ahead. Go, go back to it. Go back to the scholarship. We're we just letting scholarship talk right now. Right. So we just showed you the difference that you have the original, the ancient black Jews, and then you have these converts, the uh, white Jews or the pale ones with the red hair and, and blue eyes. That's why when you look at some of them, 
Yeah, you can go to you can go to any uh you can start at that first one. And and we're gonna read we're gonna read all those. We we go on to multiple sources showing that they are not the people. No, we don't need it. You don't need that. Yeah, right there. I think I got at least five sources. Oh no, that's for you. Yeah. That's for you. That's not for class. You gotta go all the way down this to. This is for me. This. Yeah, you gotta go down to what I sent you today. Keep going. Right here we go. Can you see that? Can you see it? All. All all sorts of merchants come here from the land of Babylon, from the land of Shinar, from Persia, Media, and all the sovereignty of the land of Egypt, from the land of Canaan, and the empire of Russia, from Hungary, Pat Patnikia, Pat Pat in mm -hmm. Akia, Kazaria. That's it, Kazaria. So the author of this book is a a Spanish Jew, which you read, the Spanish Jews are always dark. The same, the same Jews that was in Italy and Spain and Portugal during the time when Paul went there on his ministry. He says it in Acts. I mean, not Acts. He says it in uh, Romans 15. So this Spanish Jew he saw people that came from Kazaria. Why didn't he say he saw his brethren? Because those are Edomites, that's why. Now go to the next one. This is from the same book. Go ahead, read that. The southern provinces of Russia was, were spoken of as the land of the Khazars, <laughs> especially by Jewish writers, but by Jewish writers. Long after the Russian conquest, about the year 1000, and the Crimea was known to the European travelers as the Gazaria. Mm -hmm. It took Rabbi Pat Pat Patakia. Pat Patakia eight days to pass through the land of the Khazars. See Dr. A. Bench's translation of Patakia's travels in note three, page 70. He gives a... He gives a no, short no. sketch of their history. The ruling dynasty and more of the inhabitants embraced the Jewish religion. Converts. 100% they are converts. This is from the same book. This guy is a Spanish Jew, a black Jew. All right, go to the next one. Oh, we did that already. Okay. This is from the book, The Jews and Moors of Spain. So these are Spanish Jews. Matter of fact, this, they went to um, Rabbi, a black Jew, uh, Rabbi Kazdai, and this is his account. He sent letters to them to find out who they were because he heard about them. Go ahead, read that. What we <laughs> gather from this conversation is this. West of the Caspian Sea is a powerful kingdom Named Kor Korza. Kor Korzar. It's Korzar. just another name for Khazar. Before the strength of which the Persian monarchy trembles, and whose favor and al al alliance is courted by the Greek Empire. Its original inhabitants were a Turk Turkoman. Turkoman tribe who had gradually abandoned their, nomad, their nomadic habits and maintained considerable commer commerce. The capital, Bilingar, Bilingar is sit situated at the south of the Volga, and a line of cities stretches across from thence to the Don. Merchants of all religions, Christians, Mohammedans, and Jews were freely admitted and their superior intelligence over his more barbarous subjects had induced one of their kings, Bulan, 740 AC, 
to embrace the religion of the Jews. His choice between the conflicting claims of Christianity, Mohammedanism, and Judaism was decided in this manner. He examined the different, the different teachers apart. He asked the Christians if Judaism was not better than Mohammedanism. That's it. That's it for that. It's going to go to another one. But he embraced the Jewish religion. So everybody's saying the same thing. All right, this is another book called Has The Kingdom of the Khazars. The Khazar Correspondence has died if Shum Shumpert. This, so we just read from the other book what has I said. This book is is also talking about what has I said. Right. Has died Ib Shaprunt, famous Khazar correspondence with 10th century Khazar king Joseph, came about because of has interest in finding further confirmation that an independent Jewish kingdom still existed. So what's going on is we everybody knows that our people are scattered throughout the earth. So we're trying to find each other in all the different kingdoms that we've been scattered into. So he heard about these Khazars and he inquired, sent a letter to them. Go ahead. <laughs> um, Hazai res resided in Cordoba, Spain. He was a physician as well as the visor to the Umayyad, Umayyad Caliphs, Abd al-Rahman <laughs> III, reigned 911 to 961, and Hakim reigned 961 to 976. Hazai wrote to Joseph that he initially learned about the existence of the Jewish king kingdom called Khazaria from traveling merchants. Mm -hmm. Next one. <clears throat> Start at the top. Yeah. Circa 954, Men, ma, I can't catch that word. Ben Jacob Ibn Sharuk, Hazdai's literacy secretary, composed the final draft of the query letter according to Hasdai's instruction. In the letter, Hasdai asks the Khazar king many questions such as what their land, army, government, and observance of, the, of Judaism were like, and which tribes lived under his jurisdiction. Mm. The letter was transmitted eastward to Khazar, Khazar king, to the Khazar king by Rabbi Jacob ben Eliezer, a German Jew. King Joseph's reply reached Hasdai. Hold, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me, let me, let me say something right here. Because when it's, it's a German Jew right there, that ain't talking about the Khazars. That's talking about our people. Because at this time, our people were there. Matter of fact, this is around the time that the crusade, they went, the Christians went on the crusades, and they were killing our brothers in Germany when they marched through there going to Jerusalem. So these are actual Jews, the real Jews, and they sent letter through them to the Khazars. Go ahead. So what you all are basically listening and bearing witness to is the origination or the birth of the Jewish people. Right. Just that's the point of why we bring out this, uh, this right. uh, reference. They coming out of the Caucasus Mountains and they migrating towards the West. So that's why you see it said Russia. Then eventually they're going to be in Germany and uh, what's Denmark, stuff like that, places like that. They're not going to be where our people are. Go ahead. King Joseph's reply reached Hasdai around the year 955. It stated that Joseph's ancestor, King Bulan, was circumcised, officially converted to Judaism. There you go. <laughs> Again. They converse. Go to the uh, next one. Next page. Yeah. All right. Okay. According to his own account, Hasdai first heard of the existence of an independent Jewish kingdom from some merchant traders from Khazar, Khurasan, in Persia, 
but he doubted the truth of their story. Later, he questioned the members of a Byzantine diplomatic mission to Cordoba, and they confirmed the merchant's account, contributing a considerable amount of factual, factual detail about the Khazar kingdom, including the name Joseph of its present king. Thereupon, Hazdai decided to send couriers with a letter to King Joseph. The letter, which will be discussed in more detail later on, contains a list of questions about the Khazar state, its people, method of government, armed forces, and so on. All I'm saying the same thing, because they all go to this account where they, their correspondence going back and forth. And I'm going to tell y'all something else. There's something else that was written in these letters, but there's only one source, and it's hard to find it, and that's the, like the Jewish virtual library. It tells you he asked, he was inquiring about where they originally came from, and they said Mount Sierra. Yeah, you we that's that's good enough. That's good enough. All right. Okay. Now, we talked about the flood, right? Let's go to the book of Revelation, chapter 12. I don't want you to start at verse 9. We got to show y'all something because we're going to show y'all a video about a particular brother. I pray the brother repent because unfortunately our people get tricked into believing stuff that's really just crazy. Okay, but we're going to go to the scriptures first, and then we're going to go to the video and show y'all something. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 12, and verse 9. Go ahead, brother. And the great dragon was cast out, mm. that old serpent. Now, now, when it says the great dragon was cast out, what that's telling y'all is his rulership. Can you hear me? The screen. The open screen, yeah. Okay, now it's showing you the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent, because basically it's showing you that what's happening is rulership. He's cast down off his rulership. Okay? Go ahead. That old serpent called the devil mm -hmm. and Satan, which deceived the whole world, mm -hmm. he was cast out into the earth. Mm -hmm. And his angels were cast out with him. You're seeing it today because right now this man's kingdom is being destroyed right now the kingdom right now is declining his angels are talking about his all the time about his followers that's all that, is that talking about god and satan had a fight in heaven and kicked satan now that's not what it's talking about it's just showing you that esau is being powered by satan and what it's showing you is what's happening his rulership is being cast to the earth because he's being cast down that's all it's talking about go ahead and some of his his angels his messengers are your so-called pastors. Exactly. Pushing his doctrine. And his ideology. Exactly. Go ahead. Keep reading, brother. Verse 10. Verse 10. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation mm. and strength and the kingdom of our God mm -hmm. and the power of his Christ. His anointed ones. This is power of our God and of his Christ. It's talking about the anointed ones. Who are the anointed ones? It would be you so-called blacks and so-called Hispanics today whose fathers are Negro than any descent if you repent. Right. You have to be repent. You have to be a repentant Israelite. We ain't talking about some Israeli either. You have to be a repentant <laughs> Israelite. Okay? Keep that in mind. Read on, brother. For the accuser of our brethren uh -huh. is cast down. The accuser of what? Of our brethren <laughs> is cast down. Which accused them before our God day and night. And you see it today. The accuser of the brethren. Oh, man. <laughs> Did we see the accuser of the brethren? Yeah, that crazy lady. That crazy dog on Edomite, man. She's off the chain. Anyway, the accuser of the brethren is what you see today. Okay? Right now, the spirit of Satan is accusing us today of being uh, a cult, being um, a hate group. You're being accused of things that's really are going against what the Lord says. We've been accused that day and night before the Most High. Go ahead, brother. Verse 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. Go ahead. And by the word of their testimony. To the law and to the testimony. To the law and to the testimony. It's even in Revelation. Go ahead, brother. 
and they love not their lives unto the death. What that means is, brothers and sisters, it means you forsake the world for Christ. Because when it says they love not their lives to death, what that means is, y'all, is once you come to this marvelous truth, you don't love the ways of the world. You're in this to the death. That's basically what it's talking about. You're following Christ even through the regeneration. Okay, keep that in mind. Read on. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. It's about the people. The earth and the sea dealing with the people, dealing with the people, the different multitudes. Go ahead. For the devil is come down unto you, mm -hmm. having great wrath. Because why? Because he knew that he had but a short time. So that's why he's going to push his ideologies. He's going to push his, his so-called um, religions and, and his philosophies of men and his politics. Because what happens, our people get wrapped up in politics. We're going to show you all a video of a brother who got wrapped up in that nonsense. Okay, and our brothers. I say, should say because there's an article that's out that we're going to have to read that article and show you all something. Go ahead. And the dragon... And when the dragon saw that he was cast into the earth. Now, when the dragon saw that he was cast into the earth, which means he see that his kingdom was declining, he see that now he can't fool us like he fooled us before because the truth is being pushed into the earth, is being pushed to the people, to the multitude. Now what's going to happen? Go ahead, brother. He persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child. Now, the woman is who? Is Israel? How do we know that? What you mean? It's, you mean it's not the woman in Christians? Because <laughs> they claim they're getting persecuted. Because precept must be upon precept. <laughs> Who is the woman? Go to Isaiah chapter four, chapter fifty-four, verse five and six, brother. Because it says the man to the man child is Christ. Mm -hmm. It ain't talking about Mary. He, literally, it is saying that because we're gonna show y'all that the woman who is it talking about. Isaiah chapter 54, verse 5 and 6, brother. The book of Isaiah chapter 55, uh, 54 and verse 5. For thy maker is thine husband. Mm -hmm. The Lord of hosts is his name. Go ahead. And thy redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Go ahead. The God of the whole earth shall he be called. Mm. For the Lord have called thee as a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit and a wife of youth. When thou wast refused, saith thy God. So it's showing you right then and there, y'all. That's why he had to go to a precept to show you. The woman is talking about in Revelation. It's saying that woman that brought forth the man, talking about Christ. Because out of the woman, which is Israel, Christ comes out of the tribe of Judah. So it's showing y'all what it's talking about. If y'all don't understand what the prophecy is, that's the man child that come through Israel, through the tribe of Judah. Keep reading, brother. Verse 14. Verse 14, and to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle mm. that she might fly into the wilderness into her place mm -hmm. where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time. It's just a dispensation of time, okay? The two, the, the two, the given two great of a great eagle, you're talking about the southern kingdom and the northern kingdom. Understand that, brothers and sisters. Okay, that's all I'm talking about because Israel got split up and we're nourished at the time because right now we're in the wilderness here in America. Mm -hmm. So right now we're nourished for a time because we're being nourished through what? We're being nourished through the scriptures now. Now we're being nourished because remember, in this man's society, he's nourishing us through his nonsense too. Because that, that is letting you know we're being nourished through his religions, through his politics, his stimulus packages. <laughs> <laughs> Just to name a few. Go ahead, brother. <laughs> From the face of the serpent. From the face of the serpent. Because right now, the so-called white man, who we dealing with right now? Who gave this man his power? We're going to go to that in Revelation 13. Who gave this man his authority? Who gave this man to understand how to go to space? Who gave him that? He didn't just wake up one day and come up with that on his own. Because he's being powered by something. Keep reading. Verse 15. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman. After the woman. Stop right there. Give me the video. The deplorable, the deplorable one. 
See, it pains me, y'all, because I pray that this brother repents. I really do. I'm not trying to do this to try to uh, make mockery of the man. But it's a shame how society take the basis of our people and put them up as a spokesperson or spokespeople for our nation. Brambo. Exactly. <laughs> and I'm gonna read it. We're gonna read an article. I guess I sent you the article, didn't yeah, I? Yeah, I sent it to you. You sent it to him? Okay. Listen to this right here, y'all. Check this out. He ain't a politician, right? Let's go to an article. Unfortunately, let's go to an article that Deion Sanders, which is, he was a great athlete. You know, the brother, you know, he you know he did what he, he's, I know he, now he's a coach down to one of the historical black colleges. We want to read something he had to say. Now, mind you, you just saw a video of this man, right? You saw a video, he's endorsing something. Because yours truly, Donald J. Trump, pardoned this man. Hey, man, I ain't going to lie. So, you know, <laughs> I was always a, a Cowboy fan. Right, I got you. And I like Dion and Michael Irvin. Right. But both of them boys, they some coons. Right. That's, let's, read a, let's read what Dion had to say about this man. Now, you just saw what he said out of his own mouth. He's cursing. He's a sister lady. You ain't even have, look, let me tell, I'm going to I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this to you men, too, and us as men. You mean to tell me now you ain't got that much respect for a lady sitting right before you. You got to curse and treat that lady like that? She, she's having a cordial conversation with you, an intelligent conversation with you, and you're going to act like a damn fool. She asked him questions about something that really is affecting his nation. Right. But he's so self-centered and so into himself because why? Because that's exactly how Esau want our people to be, just like that. The hell with my nation. I only care about myself. The hell with that. I don't know about no Black Lives Matter. I don't even think racism, racism exists. Go ahead, brother. Yeah, he sound like OJ. Right. When he was like, when OJ said that, oh, well, I'm, I'm, a, yeah, I'm not black, I'm OJ. Right. So he ain't black, he Lil Wayne. Right. But let's hear, but let's hear what Dion had to say about it. It's amazing to me, as intelligent as our brother Dion is, for him to say something, let's, let's find out what he had to say. You got to give it time. Just read it, read it. Read it. Read the article, brother. It's amazing. So this article is from January 20th. It yeah. It reads, um, <clears throat> Jackson, Mississippi. The White House received a letter from Jackson State University head football coach Deion Sanders in support of Trump pardoning rapper Lil Wayne. According to WhiteHouse.gov, Sanders wrote in support of this pardon, calling Wayne a provider for his family, a friend to many, a man of faith. Stop right there. A man of what? A man of faith. Where do y'all see a man of faith that this man cursing out of order? Disrespectful to a woman? 
I, 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 I don't even know what Dion was seeing with this. Go ahead. Keep going. Keep reading. A natural giver to the less fortunate, a way maker, and a game changer. How the hell is he a game changer? Changer how? Because Satan is going to use him to do what? To spread nonsense to our people. Do that, that music. Because his music is pushing hell, uh, uh, talking about our women, drugs. That's all he talks about. So, yeah, he's going to use him. My fact, it's funny how Trump pardoned this man, but didn't pardon the brother who was innocent. Right. They, they put him to death. They, they put the brother to death. So on the flip side, you, you pardon this man who is guilty. He was guilty of what he did. But, 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 but look, keep reading the article. Keep reading it. Keep reading it. Here's how, the White, <clears throat> here's how the White House statement reads in full. Dwayne Michael Carter, Jr., President Trump granted a full pardon to Dwayne Michael Carter Jr., also known as Lil Wayne. Mr. Car Mr. Carter pled guilty to possession of a firearm and ammunition by a convicted felon. Now he was now he did that, did he? He did it. He pleaded guilty to it, right? Keep going. Owing to a conviction of over ten, ten years ago. Mm -hmm. Brett Barish of Sovereign Brand, Bant Brands, who supports a pardon for Mr. Carter, describes him as trustworthy, <laughs> kind-hearted, and generous. Mr. Carter has exhibited this generosity through a commitment to a variety of charities, including donations to research hospitals and a host of food banks. So he paid his way out. No, keep going. We, 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 Deon, we have a script for that. Deion Sanders who also wrote in support of this pardon, calls Mr. Wayne a provider for his family, a friend to many, a man of faith, a natural giver to the less fortunate, a way maker and a game changer. Wayne, whose real name is Dwayne Michael Carter Jr., was one of 143 pardons by President Donald Trump issued on his final full day in office. Before the pardon, Wayne was awaiting sentencing, facing up to 10 years in prison. Give me the book of, um, give me the book of Ecclesiastes 77, brother. This is what makes a wise man angry. Because I'm showing y'all something. A brother, I forgot the name of the brother. I wish I had the article. The brother who was not, Trump didn't pardon the brother. The brother was innocent. You had celebrities that was asking for the pardon of the brother. He, yeah, he 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 let the uh, the goat go free. Right, the scapegoat. The scapegoat. But right. Let the brother go. Free. But let the brother. The brother had the brother was facing death. Wayne only was facing time. Look at the difference. This man one needed a pardon to save his life. But what happened is, uh, give me Ecclesiastes seven and seven. You got, you got, you got that um, article, um, Bethel. Was that his name? No, no. This, no. Was, this was a couple months. This was recent. The brother who got put to death, he was innocent, and Trump didn't pardon the brother. They was trying to get him to pardon him, but. That's, I think that's him. Because he didn't do it. I'm going to just say this, y'all. Y'all can look that up. You, you, you can look it up. It was a brother that was on death row, okay? And what happened was he was supposed to, he didn't even commit the murder. But what happened was because he was associated with the situation, they 
still gave him death row. He got put to death. He was he was supposed to have a pardon, but he didn't get it. But yet you pardon this man, and he's getting endorsed by Dion on this stuff. Give me the book of Ecclesiastes 7 and 7, brother. And he pardoned Kodak Black. Right, Kodak, yeah, exactly. Uh, the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 7. Surely oppression maketh a wise man mad. That's why we are angry because oppression, stuff like this, makes you angry. Because on one end, you're going to release, you're going to basically, this guy, let's just deal with it. I pray the brother repents. I'm not trying to put him out there. I'm just being honest, I'm showing an example. This man is guilty. He pled guilty to what he did. You know what I'm trying to say? But yet this other brother was innocent, and then you allow, you allow him to, you know, to get put to death. It makes a wise man mad, but go ahead. And a gift destroyeth the heart. A gift destroyeth the heart because now, because now, because he's pardoning certain people, now we think, oh, everything's okay. He did a great thing. That's why Dion writing the letter, and even Snoop switched up and said, well, you know what, because Harry O got a uh, pardon too. And all of a sudden, Snoop going to rescind what he said about Trump. Oh, well, you know, he did a great job. Meanwhile, and Michael Carter, uh, Lil Wayne, he already said, ain't no racist. Right. So now, what is that going to do? That's going to push more madness. Right. So go back to, uh, go back to, um, uh, go back to Revelation, brother. Just showing y'all something. Remember, he said when, when he was 13, a white man saved his life. Right. Now, Trump didn't save his life. Uh-oh. <laughs> and keep in mind, he did help the campaign of Trump too, y'all. You see, a gift to stir up the heart. See, see, they know who to use. Okay, go ahead. I'm going to read 15 again. Right. Uh, the book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse 15. Uh huh. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman. Now, the water as a flood would be stuff like that pardons, politics, money, fame. Video we show earlier. Right. That's the video we show earlier showing you the lies that they're being pe perpetuating to the earth. Go ahead. Christianity. Uh huh. All that. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman. Go ahead. That he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. Because if you're not rooted, you will get carried away by that flood. Okay, that's why we keep trying to tell y'all, you got to understand this man's advices. You can't get wrapped up in stuff like that. Because what's happening, okay, on one end, he's saying, okay, he's going to pardon him. But how many brothers that, like I said, you look at it like, like building a wall. Like our, our Hispanic brothers and sisters being detained in these daggone concentration in these camps. You, you, didn't, you broke up all these families. Based on its policies, but yet you saying, "Oh, everything, everything, all right." It ain't okay because what he did, he st he, this man is still doing this stuff to our people. Go ahead, go ahead, read on, brother. Verse sixteen, and the earth helped the woman. When it says the earth helped the woman, stop right there. Go to the book of um, Psalms, chapter eighty-five, verse eleven. What that means, brothers and sisters, the earth is the people, but it's telling you what's being pushed with the people. Which is the truth. The truth is basically letting us know because a lot of various organizations such as ours, we're pushing the truth throughout the earth. It says the earth helped the woman. Go ahead. The book of Psalms chapter 85 and verse 11. Go ahead. Truth shall spring out of the earth. Truth shall spring out of the earth, which is the people too. It's showing you the truth is what we're showing you. We're showing you scholarship. We're showing you references. We're showing you different things to eat up those lies that's being pushed out here. The earth helped the woman. Was that it? And righteousness shall look down from heaven. And righteousness is keeping the commandments. Okay? So go back to um, Revelation 12, 16. The book of Revelation, chapter 12, and verse 16. Go ahead. And the earth helped the woman. Uh-huh. And the earth opened her mouth mm. and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. So it's showing you that the lies that's being pushed has been swallowed up by the truth. And they hate the truth. Why do you think they always want to stop us from teaching? Stop the videos, doing all this, all trying to censor something. But you allow somebody, you allow a demon to push lies 
to our people and you allow our people to push foolishness in their music. It's talking about killing each other and pushing drugs. You won't censor that, though. That is more damaging to our people than what we're teaching. But you allow it all day. You allow somebody like Little Wayne to push all that nonsense to our people because you know he's going to do your bidding. You know he's going to be able to use as a pawn to push to keep our people in the same simple state of mind. But yet, when we try to push the truth to how to, to get our people to get themselves on one accord with the most high, you want to demonize us. Oh, oh, y'all, y'all hate group. Oh, y'all doing this. But yeah, we're trying to get to change minds, change our people to come back to keep the commands of the faith of Christ. But they don't want to hear that, though. Verse 17, brother. Finish up. Verse 17. And the dragon was wroth with the woman. He's angry because that's why they hate the truth. They even use our own people against us. Okay? These so-called pastors and stuff like that, they'll use them against us all day. Oh, you know what? They're going to use someone to look just like you to go against the truth. Like the... Like, uh the vaccine. Exactly. Oh, yeah, even with the vaccine. That's another thing y'all better be careful with, y'all. Oh, yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that. You know, condolences to the, what to Henry Hank Aaron would happen to the man. Let me tell y'all what they're doing, y'all. Pay attention, Hispanics, blacks, Native Americans. They used Henry Aaron as a pawn. They, they gave this man a vaccine. The man ends up dead two weeks later. They want to use our people, y'all, as catalysts to get us to trust their system. That's the flood again. To trust their system to make us feel comfortable because, see, Hank Aaron did it. Oh, they might try to get LeBron to do it. Oh, they might try to get all the other brothers to do it. Why? Because they use I if that's the if that's the case, if you so noble and you're so righteous, why you have to be why to be um why you have to be crafted to get us to do something? You know, we've gone over it several times right. with the brother Eleazar. Right. It's the very same thing. A man of age that people looked up to in, in among our nation. Right. And they use him. Right. To get you to put your trust in that thing. Exactly. But like Eleazar was like, the hell with y'all. Right. I'm not betraying my people. I'm going to say this again, y'all, and I love to say this. If the man ain't going to treat you right, he ain't going to teach you right. I'm going to say this one more time. When have you ever known in history, you do your own research, when have you ever known in history this man has ever cared a damn about our community? You mean tell me that all of a sudden now, you want to give us a vaccine that we don't know nothing about. To help our community. Really. If you believe that, I got some beachfront land in Arizona to sell you. And we do know ain't no water surrounding Arizona. <laughs> okay? You believe that crap, I got that to sell you. And I'm going to tell you something else too. Do your own research, brothers and sisters. Stop believing the hype. Because this man don't give a damn about us. And he never will. And he never did. But all of a sudden, he's going to take our people and push them up to the forefront and say, oh, trust us all of a sudden. No. Uh-oh, you trust Christ. You trust Christ in keeping the commandments. What you about to say, but brother? Ain't it funny? Don't they say that we make up 18% of the population? Supposedly. Why are you sitting our people out there in the forefront? <laughs> why is it so important? Right. If we only 18%, that's minuscule, why is it so important that you um, win our trust to get us to take that vaccine. Because as a plan, brothers and sisters, scripture says, do not trust thine enemy. Right. And I'm going to say it again. Do not trust this nonsense. Because if you do, you're going to end up just like our brother. And then they're trying to say, oh, well, we don't know for sure if it's a vaccine. The man was fine before he took the vaccine. <laughs> well, all of a sudden he did, though. Lose common sense, y'all. Don't, don't fall for that. Don't fall for the flood. Don't get taken away by the flood. Go now go to verse 17, brother. Verse 17. Go ahead. And the dragon was wroth with the woman. Because they don't like this teaching. They angry with the way we're teaching. They wroth with the woman. They wroth with the true Israelites, the ones that are teaching the truth. All praises to you brothers and sisters out there pushing this truth to the apocalypse. Keep pushing it. Read on, brother. 
and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. They used that, what they were just using. We showed you the video. That's a way of warfare by pushing, oh, everybody come together under your shore. That's just another method to use, try to do what? To sidetrack you into what's really going on. Read on, brother. And it's, he did not go to make war with the Christians. Exactly. Matter of fact, they are the Christians. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. Which do what? Which keep the commandments of God. The law. And what else? And have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So the law and the testimony, you can't get around it. Even in the Old Testament and the New Testament, it still said the laws in Christ, you can't get around it. Think about that, brothers and sisters. Give me 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 21, brother, finish up. The book of 1 Peter chapter 2. In verse 21. Go ahead. For even here unto were ye called. Go ahead. Because Christ also suffered for us, uh -huh. leaving us an example. Christ left us a, a beautiful, perfect example on how we're supposed to follow him even in captivity. Go ahead, brother. That ye should follow his steps. We follow him. Not follow this man's wicked society and his man's wicked uh, government. We don't follow. We follow Christ and keep him the commandments. Read on, brother. Who did no sin. Exactly. Neither was guile found in his mouth. Because Christ wasn't ever, ever crafty. He didn't have guile in his mouth. He told you as it was. Go ahead, brother. Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. Go ahead. When he suffered, he threatened not. Go ahead. But committed himself mm -hmm. to him that judgeth righteously. Righteously. And that's what we must do, brothers and sisters. That's what we must do. The book of Acts, chapter 5, verse 29, to finish up, brother. The book of Acts, chapter 5, and verse 29. Go ahead. Then Peter mm -hmm. and the other apostles answered and said, Go ahead. We are to obey God. Rather than men. And that's we must obey, brothers and sisters. We must obey the Most High in Christ, not to obey this the prince of the power of this world. We supposed to follow the, the ways of the Lord and keep it of the commandments. That's what we must do, brothers and sisters. We want to give the Most High in Christ all the praise and glory for allowing us to even expound this word just a little bit. Okay? Just let y'all know that. Y'all stay strong, stay prayed up. Put your trust in the Most High Christ. Do not trust this man's system telling you. You better keep your keep your faith strong because this, I'm going to tell you, things starting to tip off. Things starting to heat up. Brothers and sisters, put your faith in Christ. That's who you must put your faith in. Okay? Like I said before, we want to give the Most High Christ all the praise and glory, y'all. Y'all stay strong, stay safe, and stay prayed up. Okay? Because Israel, we all we got. And with that, we want to say shalom.